Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and today we're talking with members of the OLLI Players. They're associated with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, which is affiliated with George Mason University. Joining me in this segment is Sandy Lazuski. Thank you so much for being here, Sandy. Oh, well, I'm very happy to be here and excited to talk about the OLLI Players, which so, I love. So tell us a little bit about how you got started and how the OLLI Players got started. Okay. Well, I was thinking back, uh, knowing that I was going to come and talk to you, and uh, I believe that the beginnings were, went back to, uh, uh, actually, I joined uh, OLLI back in 1998, specifically to be in a group called the Reader's Theater Class. And the Reader's Theater class allowed people who had the desire to act to uh, do scenes and things, but to not have to memorize lines, which is, is a big thing if you don't have to do that. So I joined that, and, and we would, would be invited by Ollie uh, to entertain at uh, holiday parties, and we would do skits, and Valentine's Day, or any other time that they needed some type of entertainment. And uh, in 20, let's see, 2005, Kathy West joined the Ollie Players, joined Ollie, and became a big part of getting everything started, actually up to what we're doing right now. Uh, she's a retired uh, drama teacher. And some of the people in um, the Reader's Theater, me included, were more interested in learning more about theater acting and, and more about acting other than what we were doing in Reader's Theater. And so Kathy started a, in 2008, she started a drama club. And we would meet on Fridays and we would work on different projects and, and we would uh, uh, come up with different shows and things like that. And we were still entertaining Ollie specifically, the members of Ollie or if they invited some guests. So at that time they said, you need to have a name. So we became the Ollie Players Theater at that time. And uh, as that expanded, because we were entertaining not only at Ollie, but we had an opportunity to perform in the first light festival of plays at George Mason University. And also, one of our members was a producer here at FPA, and so we were able to come here and do some radio and TV plays. And so that's how that all got started, and we were then the Ollie Players Theater. Uh, another thing that we did was we did five interactive murder mysteries. Oh, wow. And they were a lot of work. What happened is after the first one that we did, uh, it was decided that there would be a class that would be offered every semester where if you wanted to be in a murder mystery, you had to take the course, you had to write the play, make up the characters, and do everything, which we did when we performed four more after that original one. So that was really fun. But then um, Kathy West, uh, again, st uh, started the Ollie Players Workshop, which was also a class that people had to sign up for. And a lot of these same people move along with these different things because they love to act right. and love to perform. And so what happened is we would work on some different uh, projects that we could do to entertain, specifically to entertain at Ollie. But uh, every so often we would talk about doing outreach. And our Michelle Blandberg, uh, one we'll of our members, we'll be talking, to her, we'll be a talking later. to her later, yes, uh, came up with um, a list of 75 uh, senior centers, retirement residents, and assisted living. And she took it on uh, and sent them letters telling them that we were available, we're a nonprofit organization, we were available to come and entertain. Well, we waited and we got a fantastic response and we uh, were very excited that now Ollie was going to go on the road. <laughs> so uh, we not only entertained in Fairfax County but also Prince William and Loudoun County wow. and we get booked quite regularly and the way that it's set up is that um, our members, which are from, I guess, I would say 60 to 89 right now, 15 to 20 people at any one time <clears throat> are in our, uh, in our group. 
and uh, we have done three different play, not plays, but programs. One called Memories, where we did um, memories of our childhood, memories of our teenage years, and then memories of our adult life and our retirement. So that was one of our shows, and, and we had a little music with it and everything. And then we, uh, we did one called Lyrics from the Heart, whereby we spoke lyrics as though we were talking, not singing them. Uh, the show we've been doing now is a vaudeville show, which is a lot, a lot of fun. And we're working our, on something now that will be a variety show. When we have to keep doing more <clears throat> so that um, we get called back to the same places right. and we have, to have show. More, we have to have <laughs> a different show. Uh, one of the things we tried was we did a play and it's much more difficult to do a play because we try to do programs where uh, individuals uh, don't always have to be there. People travel, people have plans, people are sick. So we have more standalone, uh, maybe a one person performing, or if you're not there, we have another act. So we did a play and we did perform it four times and it was wonderful. It was called Shotgun Wedding and we had a great response, but the, in trying to do a play is hard for us because of the commitment. Right, so you don't really necessarily have a permanent theatrical home like, for instance, a community theater might have. If you're taking no. your show on the road, no. then you've got to you've got to accommodate the amount of space you have. We talked about the fact yeah. whether or not they have a piano or they don't have exactly. a piano. Exactly. So you kind of got to be very flexible. We do. We have to be flexible, and we never really know exactly what to expect when we get there. I mean, we've had every, anything from like a big crowd to like three people. I mean, we just don't know. Right. So when we, when we do run into a situation like that, we say, well, this is a good rehearsal for us because we just don't know. I mean, we don't know how many people will show up. So that's part of the, the fun of it, and we just have a good time. I mean, we really do. Uh, a couple of the other things that we do uh, and have been doing for the past three or four years, we do an Ollie Players calendar. And we, we just love dressing up in costume, obviously. <laughs> but uh, the first one we did was on movies. And so we had um, Breakfast at Tiffany's and Casablanca and, you know, we had, and we sold a few of them, but mostly we, you know, gave them away to, for our friends for Christmas and our families. <laughs> and then we decided we liked it so much that we did um, one of fairy tales. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, it was like Little, Little Red Riding Hood. And, um, and then we did one on uh, uh, children's books. Mm -hmm. And so this year I was Raggedy Ann and I had an Andy. And I mean, the calendars are great. And I think we've got to where we like them. So we just do it for ourselves. Right, because you like them. That's <laughs> right, that's right. And um, back in um, 2016, uh, we joined Who's Who in Senior Theater, which is, I believe, a national group. Wow, that's impressive. And yes, and we joined that, and I, they featured us in their newsletter in July of that year as the group of the month. And they they have a, a big website, and I think they and they do have a convention of some kind we have uh, haven't gone to. But anyway, we joined that. And then um, late, the latest things we've been doing are with um, uh, the Fairfax Government Channel 16 mm -hmm. uh, podcast and also some um, uh, vi on videos. Uh, the latest thing is on scams that are being uh, oh, right, for per per perpetrated, perpetrated among seniors. on seniors. Yeah. And, and so that's one of the things that, that we're working with them. And also, um, Ollie has nominated uh, the Ollie Players for the 2018 Fairfax County Volunteer Service Award. So we're very honored by that. I mean, we don't know if we'll get it, but I mean, just the idea that, that they wanted to nominate us for that, and it's all for our outreach program. Well, I think this is a win-win because there are yeah. people who enjoy acting. I grew up in community theater in Roanoke, Virginia, oh. Oh. and you got people of all ages in community theater, oh, and yeah. people love to act, and they your do. love of acting never really stops. No, I, you're right there. I think that, um, um, I was going to, to say that the, the people who are doing this now have either done it before, maybe a long time ago, and always had that love for it, like you're saying, and then now here's their chance at this time of life to do it, and, and they are loving it. 
and and we find more people that are talented and have talents that we don't know but it uh, like just like the music it adds so much to our show when we have you know guitar playing and singing and we, at first we didn't have anything like that so anyway. so so you're clearly looking for people who not only like to act but yeah. people with musical ability, ability the piano or a guitar or some other musical instrument well, that can go on the road with you that's right except there is one thing is you have to be a mem member of uh, Ollie you mm -hmm. have to join the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute which has many many wonderful wonderful things and I think that Michelle will talk uh, about that but that um, it opens up a lot of doors and a lot of subjects and clubs and things like that that people don't know exist and they can contact I guess the contact information will show how they can maybe get a catalog of um, classes that are coming up there uh, in for the semesters we have four semesters uh, we and um, they could check and see what kind of classes there are and then you know all the players is just part of part of that. I think that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. So is there a workshop class that is given, is that something that's given every semester? The workshop class well, for all yeah. the players? All the players workshop, uh, even in the winter semester, which is four weeks long, we had it, you know, and we rehearsed for our shows that we're working on. And now in our class um, that we have to sign up for each semester, uh, we are working now on a new show and we're, we're working on that in our class. Right. And then in the spring semesters coming up will be eight weeks, and we have a class, yes, on Mondays, and um, we work on what we're going to, to do to entertain, and now mostly to take on the road, because, um, you know, depending on uh, what Ollie might want us to entertain for, but more now we're working on these shows that we're taking on the road, because we keep getting more requests to, to do it, and we're real happy with it. Well, I think that's fantastic, and yeah. I think you're providing two, two very important services, one for people who want to be part of this mm -hmm. group and to entertain because they're lifelong actors, maybe frustrated actors. I think so. <laughs> There's a lot, of, I know a lot of frustrated actors, but yeah. also the fact that there are so many community centers or assisted living or places where people really love live performances. Oh, yeah. And the fact that you are a nonprofit, people just have to reach out to Kathy, right. and we'll provide that information mm -hmm. for how people can book the Ollie players to actually right. come out and entertain. Yeah, that would be great. So um, people can get a catalog. They can sign up for your workshop every semester. The workshop is going to include being part of your traveling troupe. Is that correct? Well, it's correct, yes. And uh, they have to join Ollie. And then if they join Ollie, they can take the class, the Ollie, work, Ollie Players Workshop class and then they will be in Ollie Player. And the good news is they don't have to audition for that. No, no. no <laughs> so no thank audition. you so much, Sandy, oh. for being here. This okay. is fascinating. Oh, great. Join us after the break. So, so we, were we were walking, walking to, to school. school. At, At the corner, corner we, waited we waited for the traffic, for the traffic light. light. I started thinking about lunch. Mom pat me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really want cheese pizza. But like at Luigi's. sometimes her mind wanders. They have this video game there, and Kate's got the high score. We should have a sleepover. Maybe I should pack my pajamas. I remember saying, Laura? Laura? I think I heard Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. When, when we, we finally, finally got there, there, she gave me a hug goodbye. I really hope she doesn't have another bad day at school today. At school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Here you'll get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Welcome back to your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed. We are talking with members of the Ollie Players today. Joining me in this segment is Michelle Blandberg. She is on the board of director of the Ollie Players, as well as being an instructor at the Osher Institute of Lifelong Learning. Welcome, Michelle. 
Welcome to you. I'm glad to be here. So tell me how you got involved with the Osher Institute of Learning and how you got from the point of entry to where you are now with the <laughs> Ollie Players. Actually, I found out about Ollie by accident. I was thinking about retiring and I saw a bumper sticker on somebody's car. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. So I went to the website and I said, well, this is worth looking into. Uh, I had partially retired, I wasn't fully retired, so I s signed up for the classes that fit around my work schedule. And then when I fully retired, I jumped in full time and took one class, then more classes, then more classes. And then after I got more and more involved, uh, I was asked to run for the board of directors. And was that a first for you being on a board? Oh yes. There you oh, go. Yes. So, so these in, in your encore years, I like the term encore years. Yes. So, in your encore years, you have started doing a lot of things that are new. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned Ali players, and um, the class that I teach is Reader's Theater. Well, I've gotten to Reader's Theater. I've never done anything dramatic except playing Cinderella in kindergarten, mm -hmm. and uh, that led to me being in the Ali players. Uh, I mean, it's a wonderful group, and what we do is wonderful. Uh, so, in addition to teaching in class and being on Ollie Players and being on the board, uh, I'm on various committees, and uh, it's always something new to explore. And I think that people probably aren't as familiar with Ollie as they should be. It is affiliated with George Mason University. Yes. It's off the Tallwood location. There's more than one location, but the Tallwood yes. location is off Roberts Road, not that right. far from the, the main campus. We're on the back side of, of George Mason's campus. Uh, we are affiliated with George Mason. Most of, there are 120 um, Ollies around the country. We are, uh, the Osher Foundation supports these groups, and most of them are affiliated with different universities, and they're all geared toward education for mature adults. Uh, and so mature adults is a spectrum too. So, you know, we heard that the Ollie players have people from their 60s up to like 89. Yes, we do. But the people in your classes also run a, a range. Yes. And you don't have to be fully retired. As you pointed out, you were just working part time. So people right. who have flexible schedules can certainly take classes. Yes, and we offer an introductory membership at a reduced rate, it's 150 a year. Uh, when you join Ollie, the Full membership is 425 a year, which means you can take any class that you unlimited want. unlimited classes, whatever fits in your schedule, uh, and we have a lot of classes, over 600 classes and events a year. We also have an introductory membership, which you sign up for one term, and that's 150. So you can kind of wade in the water. <laughs> That's what I did. What I, like. I, I signed up for the introductory membership two years ago, I think, and took a class on investing in the stock market mm -hmm. because I didn't know anything about investing in the stock market, and I found that fascinating. And the yes. class was full. It was in yes. the morning, and I walk in there, and it was every seat was taken, which mm -hmm. was impressive, too, at the number of people who turn out for these classes. That's one of the subjects. Uh, we have finance and economics. We have history classes. We have, you name it, and we probably have a class on it. And if, as you mentioned before, and if you don't have a class on it, you can always right. start a class on it. Anyone can come up with a class idea, write up the proposal. There's a form on our website. It goes to our program committee. If you need help in developing your class, you can get help. Uh, you tell what term you want, what equipment you need, and our, uh, staff will work with you to make your class a reality. And so you've got George Mason professors, obviously, who, who teach it yes. at Ollie, but you've also got people who come from all walks of life and have yes. a lot of degrees themselves yes, who end do. up being first students and then instructors. Right. This area is so diverse, and we have so many professionals who've had fascinating careers, uh, education, and they come forward and teach on whatever they want to teach about. Uh, I've developed some classes that I've taught uh, because I love movies. 
So I've done classes about theater things. Uh, I come up with an idea. I make a little book, and they're, okay, I'm going to do this class. I've got classes planned through 19, no, 2019. That's so, amazing. And anyone can do that. And you never know when the catalog, let's see what's new. You know, what if someone's come so up So speaking there? of the catalog, how can people get the catalog? You can get the catalog. I'm going to hold it up. This is our current catalog. Mm -hmm. Comes out four times a year. Right. You can request it at our office on the website. Uh, you can call, write, come by Roberts Road and meet us. Uh, you can do all your registration online. We have a website where you can find all the list of classes, biographies of the instructors, uh, the schedules. We have not only the Tallwood location, but we offer classes in Loudoun and in Ruston. Oh, wow, okay. And some of our classes are at churches around the area uh, because we've grown, and the more classes you offer and the more people that come, the more that you right. can you can you can reach more people, and I love the fact that you've got like faith communities offering space and other people offering yes. space because that really makes it unlimited the number mm -hmm. of classes that you can teach through through Ollie yeah. by by utilizing different locations. And we're uh, involved with the Fall for the Books program at George Mason, so we do have events at George Mason sometime. Uh, we're everywhere. <laughs> That's Everywhere. true, you know, and I, I remember that because I went to I, I went to one session of a class at Ollie because Karen Brannon had been at Fall for the Book as a uh -huh. speaker. She wrote the book The Family Tree, and I couldn't make it to Fall for the Book, and I saw that she was speaking at this class, so I emailed the instructor and I said, "Oh, please, 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 I'm not enrolled in this class, but I am a member mm -hmm. of Ollie because I'd signed up for that introductory membership. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I am a member of Ollie. Can I just come for this one class?" And she said, "Sure, come." And so I came for the class talked with um, Karen Brannon afterwards, and then did a show with her here mm -hmm. at Fairfax Public Access um, on her book, The Family Tree. I love the flexibility of that. Yes. And if you are not a member and you want to take a look, if you call the office and say, look, I'd like to sit in on this class, and if it's not full to capacity, uh, normally we'll let you just come sit in on a class and See if you like taste. it, take a test drive. A test drive. Yeah. So besides classes, you also have all kinds of events and clubs, oh, right? Yes, we have clubs. We have uh, <laughs> endless clubs. Uh, Things see. like bridge. Bridge, uh, current events, arts and crafts, uh, poetry. We have a poetry group that publishes a book uh, called Ali Inc. Wow. We have a newsletter, online newsletter, uh, called the Ali E News. Comes out every week. Current events within the organization, a list of events at George Mason that you might be interested in. We offer, if you're an Ali member, you can get a discount. You can get your George Mason ID card. Wow. This gives you a discount at the bookstore, discount at the fitness center. Uh, you can get a reduced price parking sticker for campus. So there's a lot of little benefits to our affiliation with George Mason. Um, but then there are wine tastings and chocolate tastings. Yeah. and Oh, chocolate party. That was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, because some of our people are really into cooking. Uh, we've had all kind of events. We have a big uh, luncheon at Christmas. We have parties. We just had a Mardi Gras ice cream social last week. Wow. Every year we have an ice cream social. Why do we have ice cream social in February? Why not? Yeah, why not? So we had, you know, movies about uh, Mardi Gras and we had pralines and we had all kinds of ice cream sundays. Make your own Sunday. So we're always looking for things social. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, the, the primary focus, yes, is education. But to have fun along the way, why Absolutely. Not? And the thing about it at this point in your encore years, too, is that you're free to try things that maybe you don't know if you can do or maybe you're not going to be good at it. But you're not at that midpoint in your career where not being good at something feels like utter failure. You yes. can try something and find out you're wonderful try. or try something and go, well, I'm not very good. Your, your, your mm -hmm. foray into Latin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll never do that again. Well, but it I gave you the, other things. You tried it and you're like, wow, Latin is not for me. And so I you were able to withdraw, things. which yeah. was great too. I uh, did a dance class last year 
and we tried different types of dancing, country, western, Latin, uh, even a little hip hop, which was a lot of fun, and we got exercise. We have, like I said, a Tai Chi group that meets on Saturdays. We have general yoga classes. Um, there's just so much, not only to keep your mind stimulated, but to keep your body going. Right. And it's all connected. And I think that's the secret to a happy retirement, to stay active, to stay involved with other people, uh, and to keep learning. I agree with you. And I think there's a certain amount of autonomy over your schedule and also finding a community of people mm -hmm. who share your interests. So, you know, people do travel. So, I mean, people are, we've got snowbirds in my building where I live, and so they're in Florida, or mm -hmm. they've got grandchildren. So, you know, this offers you the flexibility of signing up for the things when you have time and when you're here. You know? And if you miss a class, you're not going to be penalized. That's right. It doesn't go you on know, your permanent record. <laughs> uh, okay, you're not there. We'll go on. And Come back next week. But just the camaraderie, you know, making friends, and we talked a little bit about the social isolation yes. of a lot of seniors. And when you have found people with whom you can form friendships, making friends in retirement when you no longer have a workplace. This is true. It has its own set of challenges. But 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 Ollie has kind of said, come and try, come and meet, yes. come and do, and figure out who your people are. We have a social events committee that does nothing but plan right? social, social events. events. Uh, then we have a special events committee that does other things. It's, it's amazing. And that's one thing I want to emphasize about Ali. So much of what we do is volunteers. We don't get paid for teaching. We don't get paid for being on the board. We bring what we have to offer to the group. Uh, when we have these events, the social events part people, lay out food tables full. I've even cooked for them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's all volunteer and that gives you a sense of community too. Absolutely. And I think that that's the thing that I hope that our viewers will understand that Michelle and Sandy have talked about is that that Ollie offers you an opportunity to find your community, to volunteer and to learn. And this is what you need to know. I hope you will come try us out. Even if you're, if you're just approaching retirement or thinking about it and you're wondering, what's, what's next? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? This is a good place to be and a good place to meet people who are going through the same thing and are looking to learn and expand their horizons well, just like you, you are. Thank you so much for being here, Michelle. Thank you for having us.